Good afternoon, Braves fans, and welcome to this week's edition of the Black and Gold Report, a program all about UNCP Braves athletics. I'm Kevin Freeman. On the show this week, we'll be joined by head football coach Pete Chinnick, and for the second half of the program, we'll be previewing the 2011-2012 Lady Braves basketball season, along with head coach John Haskins. First, we're joined by Coach Chinnick, as usual. Coach, welcome back to the program. Thank you. You got a hard-fought 23-20 to win over a, over a plucky Newberry team who was just as tough as you said that they were going to be last week. Uh, what were the keys to victory against the Wolves? Well, a couple things. I think we, we came out and played a very good first half offensively and were able to uh, get enough points on the board, I think, to secure it. Uh, and then defensively in the second half came up with some really key stops. Uh, we knew that this would be a challenge playing at their place, uh, our third road game in a, in a row. Uh, so, I mean, we, we were ready for that, and I'm just, you know, glad that our guys had enough in the tank to, to finish it off. Well, this is the Braves' fourth consecutive win, as you said, including three in a row uh, on the road. Uh, how is team confidence right now, and is the team peaking at the right time, do you think? Well, I think our confidence is, is very high right now. We feel very good about what we're doing. Uh, our guys believe in each other. They support each other. Uh, when you go on the road three weeks in a row, you know, you're, you're together with that core group of guys that are playing. And so those guys have really drawn closer. Uh, and, you know, I, I, I think if you want to peak, I mean, this is the time to do it. we got two games left, and uh, our guys are playing about as well as we've played all season. Mm -hmm. Well, uh, the, let me talk about T.J. Johnson real fast. He had arguably the best, his best game as a Brave. He went over 100 yards receiving. He scored a touchdown. And this is, in fact, the third consecutive week where you've had a 100-yard receiver. Uh, talk a little bit about the value that T.J. gave you uh, this week. Well, TJ's played hard all year long, and uh, last week Carson Newman, his back was sore, so he didn't even make the trip. Uh, so to come back and really get, uh, he gave us the spark early on, catching a couple balls over the middle, uh, just really kind of got us going offensively. He's been a hard worker. He's been a guy that's been very diligent uh, in, uh, you know, blocking for our running backs mm -hmm. and then also just doing a great job running routes. And uh, some things opened up, and Luke was able to find him and uh, excited that he was able to get 100 yards. Was that his first career touchdown? I don't remember. Not for us. No, no. He's, uh, he, he's caught a couple for us. For, okay, for us. Uh, well, uh, Travis Daniels, we talk about him every week. He had 31 carries, two receptions. He was a real workhorse this week. Almost half of the UNCP plays this last week against uh, Newberry went through Travis in one way or another. Obviously, he's having a great uh, season, but do you worry uh, uh, about his workload? He's carrying the ball a lot. I, I don't. Uh, mm -hmm. I mean, he looks really physically the same as he did after week one. And uh, he came in in great shape. He's worked extremely hard throughout the course of uh, the season. Um, you know, he, uh, he has, you know, put a lot of time in the weight room in the season and out of the season to be where he is right now. Uh, I watch him on film, uh, you know, uh, against... Um, you know, this last week against Newberry, and he looks very similar to what I saw mm -hmm. uh, at Fayetteville State. So he is he has held up well, and uh, we're going to keep giving it to him as long as he keeps getting positive yardage. Well, let me let me ask you this: uh, um, players who come into camp already physically fit, they've been working out during the summer. Can you tell a difference as the season goes on between players who are fit and who are in shape versus those who might come into camp a little out of shape and got to work it off as, as the preseason goes on? Definitely. The guy who's in shape, I mean, he's less apt to get injured. He's, uh, you know, he, he gives himself more opportunity to get more reps. As the season goes on, you're either getting worn down or you're getting in better shape and being able to handle it. Uh, and the guys who get worn down are the guys who, uh, you know, did not come in uh, in the right shape and did not maintain it. Uh, throughout the course of the season and, and we've, we've worked hard to maintain it uh, and that's one of the things that you see in Travis. I think you see that in our offensive line. Mm -hmm. uh, those guys are getting stronger. We've had a great rotation at wide receiver uh, on offense also where those guys have been able to stay fresh. Okay. So it, it, it's, it, there is a big difference. If you're in shape, it definitely helps. We've, uh, you've gone 23 and six, uh, or uh, sorry, you got it to a 23 to six lead before Newberry began to whittle the lead down. Uh, what kind of adjustments did the Wolves make first in the second half or, 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 or uh, was this another case of your defense perhaps, I don't know, lowering their guard uh, when they had a comfortable lead? Well, I think a couple of things. I mean, Newberry, we knew was good. You know, last five games Newberry's played, I think, been decided by a total of about 15 points. Mm -hmm. uh, and they've been in these type of games. Uh, you know, we gave up a couple of big plays on defense that, you know, allowed them to get back into the game. And then offensively, you know, we missed a field goal. We turned the ball over. Uh, and we were kind of, you know, we had bad field position on a couple of uh, those occasions where we were a little more conservative. So it was really a, a, a bunch of different scenarios mm -hmm. that kind of played into, the, you know, them having the ability to come back. So this wasn't something necessarily that you had seen before. It was just sort of a combination of all kinds of things that uh, 
uh, put it all together. Well, real quick, Coach, we got about 30 seconds left. Uh, Taylor Basket really controlled the game with his foot this week, uh, and he was pretty accurate kicking field goals. I know he missed one, but he made three. Uh, talk about that senior kicker for a minute, and, and why are quality kickers in relatively short supply in D2? Well, the, the, to answer the latter part of that question, I mean, a lot of guys, they'll take it, a lot of kickers out of high school will take an opportunity to walk on at a D1 uh, to earn a scholarship. A lot of Division Ones don't give out scholarships to kickers, and so there's a great opportunity for them to do that. Uh, with Taylor, we've been very fortunate. We've had him for four years. Uh, he's been very consistent for us. Uh, he was three for four, and mm -hmm. uh, the one he missed, uh, you know, kind of that's a fluke in, <laughs> in, in his arsenal there because that usually doesn't happen. Right, right. All right, well, we're going to take our first break. When we come back, we're going to talk more to Coach Shinnick about the upcoming game against Winston-Salem State. Founded in 1887 as the Croatan Normal School, the University of North Carolina at Pembroke has grown to a student body of over 6,000 and is now one of the most diverse institutions in the nation. As we prepare to celebrate our 125th anniversary in 2012, we remember the rich heritage of this institution and anticipate an exciting future. With an average class size of 21 students, the University of North Carolina at Pembroke is a place where students will get the personal attention they deserve at a great value. If you want to know your professors and classmates and have an enriching experience inside and outside of the classroom, then UNC Pembroke might be exactly what you're looking for. If you have what it takes to be brave, check out experience.uncp.edu. There you can take an online campus tour, schedule a campus visit, or apply for admission. Going to UNCP isn't for everyone. It's for the brave. 